Happy Shiri families. This is Mr. Bowman coming to you from our home kitchen. Uh, welcome to what I think is the first edition of Quarantine Cooking Class. I believe this entire operation is the brainchild of Maya Jeffrey, Caitlin Slayton, and Alicia Ceccarelli. So you can thank those three ladies for what is supposed to be a multi-installment of Quarantine Cooking WCA Families at Home. Today we're going to show you how to make Fresh baked soft pretzels. Everybody loves the salty carbohydrate bomb that is a cheese covered soft pretzel, but no one likes to pay $8 for them at the mall or the ballpark. So today, hopefully we're gonna show you how to do that on your own. The first thing we need to start with is two cups of warm water. Most uh, home water heaters are plenty hot enough to do this. We're gonna take our two cup measurement, come over to the sink, and it is very specific. We do need the water to be almost exactly 110 degrees. The idea is to make it warm enough to grow the yeast, but not hot enough to kill it. So I'm using an exceptionally high-tech method of holding the thermometer in the water until I get it the temperature I want. Two cups of warm water goes into the mixing bowl. And after it, we add to that four and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. We want to give the yeast a chance to sit in there and activate. Yeast is an, an actual alive organism that will wake up out of its hibernation in the warm water. So while that is working, let me tell you how we're going to mix it. I'm using a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, which is the easiest way to make this work at home. You don't have to have one of these but if you do, it does help a little bit. Uh, these are somewhat expensive. This one I think was about $250. I got it as a graduation present from when I finished culinary school, which means it is older than all of my students and maybe some of my colleagues at this point. So as you can see, if you do spend the money, they do hold up rather well over time. The yeast has had a half a minute to bloom, so we're gonna get in here and we're gonna add to our yeast two tablespoonfuls of sugar one tablespoonful of salt, and five and a half cups of flour. We are being very specific with our measurements. Uh, you can talk to Mrs. Bobbitt for all the science behind it, but baking relies on chemical reactions and precise measurements. Everything in the recipe contributes a specific thing to the reaction and to the science of it. So don't mess around with your recipes, follow them exactly and everything will go fine. We have our water, yeast, sugar, salt, and flour, and that's actually all that's gonna go in the pretzels. So we snap things into place, we add a dough hook, and we start to mix it. We let that go for just a minute or so, and when it's had a chance to mix, we let it down, scrape the sides of the bowl, and keep mixing. Once the dough begins to form into what's called a shaggy dough, which normally talks about haircuts and carpets, but in this case, if you look in the bowl, you'll see that it's starting to, starting to come together a little bit. And you can see what looks like little tiny hairs of flour. It's actually just your dough coming together. And as soon as that dough forms into a ball, it's ready to go. So we have a lump of dough. We have a lump of dough mixing in our mixer, and I'm gonna let this mix for five minutes on low speed. Our dough has been mixing for five minutes. You may have to add additional flour to your dough if it's a little bit sticky, but if you come in here and look in the bowl, you'll notice that when it's done right, the dough ends up being soft, smooth, and a little bit springy. You see how it holds together, which is exactly what you want. So, take it, use your hands to form it into a bowl, make a little pocket underneath with your hands. The bowl you mixed it up in, spray it with a little bit of vegetable spray, oil. The dough goes back into the bowl, and then spray the top of it just lightly. 
The idea is we're going to let this dough rise, and while it's rising, we don't want it to form a dry crust on the top. That's actually not part of any of the recipes that I've seen. It's just something that I've learned over time. So we cover our dough in saran wrap, and it's going to go into the oven to warm up. Now the oven is set at 170 degrees. It's as low as our oven will go. You definitely don't want it any hotter than that. At a molecular level, cooking starts at 180 degrees, so you want to definitely keep it below that. The dough goes into the oven to rise. It's going to take 20 minutes to rise, and while that happens, we're going to get our water bath ready. Juniors and seniors might recall a conversation that we had in Bible class about how you probably don't want to know what goes into preparing a lot of your food. I had told you to go read the classic novel, The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, and it'll help you understand bologna and pickle loaf and canned meats just a little bit better. This might be one of those times where you really didn't want to know how your food is made. So if you bring the camera over here, I'm going to give you a look at what we're going to use to make the good pretzel -y crust. This is what's technically called sodium hydroxide. Most people just call it lye, L-Y-E. And lye is an exceptionally caustic product that will a little burn your skin off if you touch it. Uh, it's used in industrial applications as a drain cleaner. It's probably the world's fa most fantastic drains, but you can't use it in older houses because it will actually eat the pipes. So you don't really want to eat this stuff straight, and it's very, very important that when you make pretzels and you order lye to use in pretzel making or any kind of home application, that you make sure to get one that says food grade. We've got food grade pure 100% sodium hydroxide here, which is exactly what we want. Because this stuff is rather unpleasant, I'm going to take a couple of precautions. Number one, I have the window vented because that's going to cause some unpleasant gases here in a minute. And two, we're using some gloves to mix everything up with just in case we don't want to take any chances of getting these things on our skin. I've already measured out and prepared five cups of water, and this is one quarter cup of lye. And again, these ratios are extremely important. Don't play around with them. Five cups of water, quarter cup of lye. I'm going to hold my breath while I pour this in here so I don't breathe in the fumes, and then I'm going to stir it up with a stainless steel spoon. Don't use aluminum when you're using lye, because it'll actually eat away at the aluminum. If you use an aluminum spoon or aluminum pan or a pot when applications with lye, it'll develop little pits in it where the, the chemical is eaten away the metal. So very important to use stainless steel with lye. So I'm gonna hold my breath, and I'm gonna gently mix this up. Cover it back up. We're not ready to use this yet, but I just don't want anything to fall in there and accidentally get it on ourselves. At this point, we're going to let our water bath sit and we're going to let our dough rise for 20 minutes. I just pulled our dough out of the oven. It's been in there for 20 minutes. 20 minutes or until it doubles in size, whichever comes first. The plastic wrap doesn't melt at 170 degrees, so you're fine. You take your dough. Dump it out on the counter, and we cut it up into our individual pretzel portions. The easiest way to do this without cutting your counter and marking it up is just with the regular pizza cutter. And it goes simple enough. We're making a double recipe of this today because there's five people in my family, and this is what we're eating for dinner tonight. If you have a smaller family, or you're cooking for fewer people, it's easy enough just to cut all of this in half. Once we get our dough portioned out, we're gonna roll it out and put it on a baking sheet with parchment. It's very important that you use parchment paper or baking sheets. Don't use aluminum foil, plastic wrap, or wax paper. Bad things happen when you put plastic wrap and wax paper in the oven, and aluminum foil is gonna get holes in it from the lye water once we dip them and put the pretzels on the base. So a quick coating of vegetable spray helps it to not stick. You can make your pretzels into any shape you want because we keep things simple around here and I'm not very creative. We just do them in regular pretzel sticks. You can tie them in knots. 
Some kids I know like to shape them into animals. <laughs> you can do pretty much whatever you want. And I think the fancier your pretzels will be, the more impressed people will be with your meal. As I'm doing this, let me issue a challenge to somebody else. These pretzels came about because of Elliot Walker heard that we made pretzels one day. And so in class, he never let up until I agreed to make pretzels and bring them in for the class. And actually what ended up happening is I told him I wasn't going to make pretzels because I didn't do things just because students demanded them. So we didn't. I waited a good three, four, five months and then just brought them in for free for fun, which is the way we like to do things. But if your family has a special thing that you like to make that's a little unusual or different, well, that means you're next up for quarantine cooking class at WCA. As you can see, we've almost got things done here. Two left to roll. In the sink next to the pretzel pan is our water bath, which is just a mixture of lye and water. When you go to take the lid off of it, hold your breath like normal so you don't breathe any of the vapors that may have accumulated inside. So I'll do that now. And go back with the gloves. I will say this, I like to have skin on my hands, so I put gloves on, but it's also not going to be that terrible if you do get some of the lye water on your hands. It's happened to me before, it burns a little bit, but you wash it off with cold water and you're mostly just fine. As long as you don't drink it or take a bath in it, it's just going to turn your skin a little red. So what we do is, if you can get in here and look in the pot, we take our pretzels and they go into the lye water for 15 seconds. And you can do multiple pretzels at a time. I've got a big enough pot that I think I can actually fit all of them in it at once. When you do this with multiple pretzels at once in the same pot, you just want to be careful that you remember which pretzels went in first so you don't have some that are overdone and some that are not. 15 seconds goes by, you let them drain a little bit, and they just go back on. I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but they've turned from a white to a yellowish color. And what that's doing, that's the, the caustic soda, the lye, that's beginning to work the chemical reaction that's eventually going to give the pretzel their dark, chewy crust. Once all the pretzels have drained a little bit, you put them back on the pan. Oh, and another thing, this becomes important not to use an aluminum pan because all of this lye water is going to run onto it a little bit as they bake. We take our gloves off real careful, set them aside for a minute. We don't want these to stick while they're rising. So a quick coating of vegetable oil. Cover them up with saran wrap. And we take our lye dipped saran wrap pretzels and we put them back in the oven. We haven't changed the temperature at all. We're still at 170 degrees and we let that rise for about another 20 minutes. I've just pulled our pretzels out of the oven. They're risen, they're ready to go. Put the plastic wrap, plastic wrap tends to cling to the pans when it gets warm. It won't melt. So you peel it off and we want to add salt to them. For pretzels, you want to be able to taste a lot of salt. You want to be able to see a lot of salt. You can buy specialty pretzel salt if you want. We tend to use just regular plain old kosher salt. There's absolutely no scientific way of determining how much salt goes on each pretzel. We just determine how much we want. Depending on how much of a heart condition you want to have, you may want to add a lot of salt, you want to may add a little salt. But once they're all sprinkled with salt, they're going back in the oven at 450 degrees, and they're going to bake for 12 to 15 minutes. We've got a little bit of salt left. That's getting washed down the drain. 
The oven is preheated to 450 degrees. We set a timer so we don't forget. We're going to turn the pretzels every six minutes. While those are cooking, we're going to come over here and get rid of our water bath from before. You don't want a pot of lye water just lying around. <laughs> I did mention that it was a little toxic, but in its diluted form like this, it's not going to hurt your pipes or your sink. So we just take the lye water, we pour it down, but then we make sure we rinse it out real good. A little cold water, a little hold your breath while it works, and we let our, our pot dry, we let our pretzels bake, turn them every six minutes, 12 to 14 minutes, and they'll be done. Our pretzels should be done. We'll pull them out of the oven. And you can see, they've got a nice brown crispy crust on them. They went for six minutes in the top rack and we switched them and they went for six minutes in the bottom rack. These pretzels needed an additional three minutes to finish up. And as you can see, they are sitting next to the official soft pretzel side dishes which consists of nacho cheese sauce. When the Lord eats soft pretzels, he eats them with nacho cheese and broccoli. We're not much for broccoli and the nacho cheese sauce may or may not actually contain real cheese, but it does have the added benefit of making the broccoli taste like cheese. So we take it and we slather it all over everything and it's delicious. That sums it up for our first ever quarantine cooking class here at WCA. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go and enjoy your pretzels. We'll see you next time.